What's good, King Gonda? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode here on the YouTube channel. I know my background is different, my laptop is tripping family, but we got one of my brothers on here that's in the Pan-African circle, man. He's a, a real, real, real genius. Uh, I'm going to let him explain who he is, and we'll get into the topic. Go ahead, family. Hey, I'm Afridamos of the Afridamos Report, and... Um... I'm originally from uh, Gambia, but been living in the United States. That's where I call home. So today I'm here on the King Gander to have a conversation with OCA Duke Jackson. Thank you for inviting me. Give a round of applause, editors, because the brother is definitely talented. And before I was, uh, I said, man, he has so many controversial topics that um, Africans hating, um, African Americans hating sometimes. Uh, everybody hates him. I said, man, you mess up, we're going to get killed <laughs> by some of the stuff you talk about, but you're a very oblique thinker. And um, the intellectual uh, prowess is up there. I said, man, you know, it, it, I, sometimes I just listen to you. You don't know I'm listening to you, but I'm like, man, this guy is really bright. I didn't think about it. And it's a very unorthodox views you have. So I know that they're, they're your own because I've never heard them from anywhere else. Um, so, but let me ask you this. What brought you to the United States from Gambia? Well, um, I've always, uh, for instance, like my uh, uncle, he he moved to the states like back in in the eighties, way back, and he's always told me about the United States, and he said, "Look, this would be a good spot for you. You should come here and go to school." And from there, we made it happen. Okay, okay. So you've been living in the states. For, for a long time now. Um, and now you, uh, you, you I know another trend to the, uh, I can tell from the weightlifting thing from your intro. So you do that, you're getting your swole long play up. That's but, right. <laughs> um, but one of the things that you, that you talked about um, the other day is, and it's a very controversial um, topic because your st streams, you like to talk. You're a bit, well, you are what we call in the black community long winded because you like to talk. <laughs> For a long period of time, but it's good because you make a lot of sense. You said that African colonialism actually improved the Gambia, even though people disagree with that. But you said that, it, and, and, and to a larger extent, do you believe that it improved Africa? Yes. Why yes, do you say uh, that? Because uh, if you look at it uh, prior to colonialism, you know, ask yourself, what is Africa? Prior to all these countries, you have to go back and look at the history. You know, um, things were based on little kingdoms in certain areas or larger kingdoms. And in these kingdoms, what is it based off of, especially like the Senegambia area? Um, it's based on bloodlines, you see, where people, you have a group of people that would rule over others you know, you have the caste system and you have the slavery system. So they, they were not doing anything that is productive at all. No infrastructures, no, you know, no form of uh, formalized education, you know. But when the Europeans colonized Africa, um, I mean, some parts it was terrible, but we have to look at the pros and cons, you know, where we are today they raised the consciousness of the African. They, uh, they, they created a system for Africans to be organized, to be able to, to, to join the rest of the world. Because if it wasn't for, for colonialism, Africa would still be in the dark ages. Did you, mm -hmm. do, you do you know that? Uh, well, I'm I'm taking your word for it because um... no, it will it because you know as a, as somebody you know who was born and raised there, mm -hmm. right? Okay, if you go to some areas where the people have no form of any sort of education, okay. no contact with the outside world, okay, right? So look, mm -hmm. take a look at them, okay. take a look at the environment, and mm -hmm. compare it to even you know other parts of the country where the people are educated right okay you compare them you would understand it's a, yes it looks to people that it's a simplistic way of living mm -hmm. but it really isn't mm -hmm. 
because everything they do is difficult. People have to come there to help them. They believe in in things like they have taboos. They believe in dark spirits, mm-hmm. you know, and and those things cannot take you anywhere. The things they believe in, even let's say healing, things as simple as even performing CPR, they don't know that. If you pass out there, they're going to bury you. You would be buried alive. You know how many people get buried alive in most African countries where, you know, they don't have this formalized education. Mm-hmm. So, so you have to look at that too. You know, and people have to ask themselves, mm-hmm. why was Africa colonized? Why was it so easy to colonize Africa? Have you ever mm-hmm. thought about that? Oh yes, I thought about it. W- what conclusion did you come to? <laughs> well, there was definitely a lack of development, a lack of technology to even defend it in the first place. Well, well, it's not. You have to remember, you, Europeans people like to say. They came there, they fought wars. That's not what happened in the whole of Africa. Okay. Yeah, that's not how it happened. Because if you think about um, even, let's say, the way slavery, you know, which most people in America are familiar with, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, people like to point fingers at the, at the white man or they would say, oh, the white people came there, they grabbed the people. But did you know that 500 years prior, prior to the Atlantic slave trade. Mm -hmm. It was the trans-Saharan slave trade. You see, it was the trans-Saharan slave trade. And before that, there was still slavery and nobody knows how long it's been there. But if you are part of most African culture and you, 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 you look at the thinking of Africans, the reason why it's easy to enslave Africans is the African culture itself, because Africans believe in enslaving other Africans. Because if you want to get free labor from other people, you know, isn't that slavery? Yes. People give birth to children in Africa as insurance plan. They, you know, that's slavery because you're giving birth to a human being so that this human being can come and, you know, take care of you. So Uh there was deep slavery there. The Europeans, yes, they participated, but they also were the ones that ended it. Did you know that there were people on the coast who were fighting? They They took up arms against the Europeans for trying to stop slavery. Did you know this? I did not know that. Yes. Yeah, they did that. So, so, so a lot of the backward culture, a lot of the toxic culture, you know, was eradicated, was stopped because of the European, European colonization. All these, uh, you know, little kingdoms, big kingdoms attacking each other. The Europeans stopped that. You know, this is why after, if you, I don't know if, if you're familiar with African history, after colonialism Mm -hmm. you know if you look at it in the 90s like right after the europeans left starting in the late 60s 70s 80s up to 90s up to you know early 2000s tons of africa african countries there were wars there civil wars you know the popular one you look at rwanda these are these are beefs that you know, the Africans had to settle among between each other. You know, these are long time beefs, but the Europeans were the ones that put a stop to it. But once the Europeans left, once they left, they went right back to, you know, finishing up the beefs. You mm-hmm. see? So, so, so they brought peace also. They brought peace. This stability that you see in African countries, they were the ones that brought it there. Yes, I get it. People say, oh, Africa people, oh, the people are peaceful. They just came and got them. That's not true. If the way people talk about Africa prior to colonialism, prior to what we see today, you know, most places in Africa are hostile for you. You cannot step foot there. You would either be enslaved or killed. 
one or the other. Mm -hmm. Unless you're from th those tribes or you're related to them somehow. So this is why when people say, oh, all the Africans are the same or they, they're aware of each other. That's not true. That's a new okay. thing. That okay. is a new thing. Let me, let me ask you this. So since colonialism has ended and now there are certain infrastructures that are in Africa, do you believe that, and I know there are certain people, I've heard um, one Nigerian senator, I don't know, I think I saw a quote where he said that they actually needed to come back to make Africa better. Do, do you believe that uh, countries like the Gambia, you know, countries like uh, country, other countries in the ECOWAS regions, um, can they handle the job now since colonialism or do no. we still need more European intervention? I think the Europeans left prematurely. Some of these places need to be colonized again. Because if you look at, for example, you say Gambia, go and look at the salaries for even the Gambians that were employed during colonialism the salary that the white men were, were paying the, even the servicemen was much much higher than what the gambians even pay gambians today if you go to banju for instance they have what they call the rvh the biggest hospital there quote unquote that was built by europeans you're going to see victorian buildings these mm -hmm. are the are the best structures there Mm -hmm. You name an African country you go to where you would find a structure that Africans built themselves with their hands that they would say, oh, this is a hundred years old. It's built by Africans. Mm -hmm. Name name one place. So, so I think people have to be more realistic about what the facts are because they, they, they just want to focus on this fact that saying, oh, we have to be on our own. We have to be independent. But how independent are you? Because if you look at places like Gambia, even the politics, you know, because I follow the politics, I know the, the mentality. It is not a 21st century politics. This is like medieval time politics. You know, I listen to it. People don't know the attacks, you know, the spiritual battles, the, you know, warfare they go they they emit on one another so 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 these are some of the things that you know are holding back africa you see you know you look at african nations during colonialism and when right after colonialism some of these places were handed great economies and they brought it they brought it down they destroyed it completely because the Africans, they just want power, but they are not competent to run the place. I know most people are not going to like this, but ask yourself, sit back and ask yourself, you know, I'm not talking about individuals. I'm talking about as a group, okay. as a okay. group, as okay. a collective, because mm -hmm. it has to take the collective to be able to run things. In mm -hmm. Africa, most Africans, why do you think I have so much great time in, in, in the United States. I'll give you an example here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you take a seed, mm -hmm. let's say this seed is good seed whatsoever, healthy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you place this seed, you know, on top of a concrete, just mm -hmm. mere concrete mm -hmm. and you expect it to grow. You're fooling yourself, right? It's right. not going to happen. You have to take that seed and put it in a fertile soil and the yes. seed is going to grow. Right. So it's the same thing. This is why you see you would bring you would have an African person. Mm -hmm. You see them in the in America, you're like, oh, this individual is intelligent, they are capable, and all that. But that same person, when they were in Africa, mm -hmm. is this is like putting that seed, you know, in a concrete. In Africa, mm -hmm. most African countries, everything is up. Is there's a roadblock for you? Mm -hmm. There's a roadblock mm -hmm. because the people that you're dealing with, mm -hmm. you know, um, the type of uh, uh, things that you want, 
for, mm-hmm. you know you 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 know you want it for the people mm-hmm. but they are not thinking along those lines because you have to mm-hmm. remember many mm-hmm. of these people they're thinking along tribal lines mm-hmm. they're thinking along tribal lines you know oh i'm the president you know i'm gonna you know hire my cousin who mm-hmm. who don't know anything about about what's going on you know and put them in charge just because mm-hmm. it's my cousin then right. my that my that cousin would also bring in the other cousins you know so in their head they are just there to eat and collect you see so so but when europeans were there there was competence there was efficiency and and that was in there before they came they brought it and they left a little bit of it behind mm-hmm. yeah let me let me ask you this um afridamas because people will say cuz i know that at a certain point nigeria before they had the naira had a currency that was worth more than the dollar mm-hmm. i know that was the case with uh, zimbabwe when mugabe got it um certain countries and so you have these people that say well outside powers did not want africa or african countries to stabilize which is why they destabilized it it wasn't necessarily well it could have been some african leaders but also the outside forces like in the biafra war where you had um the british funding the north against the south although they have developed the south and left the north you know very barren do you believe that european powers that also left these countries played a role in destabilizing it or was it the african leaders fault uh, that proves that entirely proves my point what is it about africans that people can just pin them against each other that's mm-hmm. the question people should be asking it mm-hmm. still proves that they are incompetent mm-hmm. you know um because if because the animosity and the hatred is already there right Mm-hmm. so the conditions favored favored it you're able to get the guns from the europeans and these guns are not free by the way people think they just dump it the africans are buying it you see so if i'm selling a product mm-hmm. you know you want to buy it i'm selling it to you right mm-hmm. it's up to you how you use it because if do you think do you think japan china and you know singapore these places you don't think do you think europeans want them to surpass them or or compete at their level mm-hmm. they don't want, you know they have no choice over it because mm-hmm. i take it from us you know from myself living in the states the things i want to do i'm pretty sure there are people who wish they could stop me but you know they cannot stop me because it's all about what i think what my agenda is and how i execute it so it's a cop out when they say these things cuz i've lived in sierra leone also i don't know if you know this i spent my earliest childhood there and they had the civil war there over the diamonds it was in europeans coming there fighting killing the africans it was africans killing africans let's say the europeans are hating they don't want africa to stabilize but what about the, if the africans truly want it to be stabilized don't you think they they would do something about it mm-hmm. because th- this is what the world is you're going to have adversaries it's a competition it's it's a competition So if you guys are competing to destroy your own economy you can blame that on Europeans like i said when the Europeans left go look at you know even places like Gambia i just gave you an example the european salary was higher okay yeah it was higher mm-hmm. you see what people don't even know like when the british colonized gambia right mm-hmm. they they were lo- they they were losing money did you know this Yes, yes, on the on the not only the Gambia but in many places. In yeah, they were losing money. Mm-hmm. They were not, you know. So so this idea that 
oh, they were taking these things, blah, blah, blah. That's not true, you know? Because if you look at even places like Sierra Leone, they didn't discover diamond until 1930, you know? And it didn't take long. The place, you know, eventually, um, eventually was independent. But you talk about these mines, the diamond mines, who is in charge of these things? It's not Europeans. Who's in charge of the trades? Who's making the deals? It's not Europeans. You take example uh -huh. of like Nigeria. Uh -huh. People like Sunny Abacha. Oh my God, yeah. Sunny Abacha stole, you know, stole over, what, $2 billion? Oh, $2 yeah. billion. Dollars. You look at place like Gambia, for instance, which is as recent as now. You have Yaya Jame. It is estimated that the you know a country that people say is so poor this man is estimated that he's taking a little over a billion and if you look at his lineup which i can speak of the people that he put in charge he put his own relatives in key places these are the most incompetent people you would ever meet so i refuse to believe that it is the Europeans doing. Because I take example for even Gambia. The people they put in charge, I see their qualifications. The people that are that are fighting to, to rule that country, I know their mentality, you know. I mean, it's just not, they don't have what it takes. Let's put it that way. Yes, if they, if they just want to run it to be the way it is, sure, it's, you know, they... They, they should just be honest about it and say, hey, we just want to remain the way we are. We want to be remain a mediocre place. Fine, that's great. But they cannot say it is the Europeans' fault. The Europeans are giving aid to African countries. If they don't want them to succeed, like, you think they will be giving them aid? No, I, I definitely, I definitely, I definitely agree, brother. Let me ask you um, this one thing because I know you ended up with this idea, of, and you gave some real strong points. That's one thing I like about you. You you give good positions as to why you feel that way, and I said you're a very bright guy in that in that regard. It's very, 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 very hard to um, to kind of come against some of some of the positions that you have. But for those people that's in the global black community that will say, well, the colonization has created a mindset that black people feel that, um, you know, their culture is less than, um, you know, or, you know, that the whites have made colorism the way it is and they don't have a knowledge of themselves and who they really are and things like that. Um, you know, you hear that all about in the black world and, and, that, and that black people have an inferior mind complex because of the European ideology regarding the black race or the African or, or the African race. What would you say about something like that? Hmm. Most, most uh, black people and Africans are pitiful people. You know, they create, they have this inferiority complex, you know, where they, you know, they, this is how they, they feel about themselves, but try to pass it off to say it is Europeans that think that way about them. But, you know, ask yourself, how come they don't, they, you know, black people, they only look to white people to validate how they think about who they are. They're not looking to another black person or African to validate that for them. Because, for instance, I take it from myself, the way I exist in this world. You know, um, I'm not looking for somebody's idea of what they see me as or what is superior or inferior you, you see because the most black people start thinking in terms of that and and once they start thinking that way they look at white society how white society is structured how the western culture is organized and progressing right so they know they know okay this is competence this is what we want to do, but they know that they cannot do it. So therefore they have to do a cop out and say, it is white people making us feel, think about it. 
They're not saying white people are coming making us. They're saying feel. Mm -hmm. So when somebody say feel, mm -hmm. that's a subjective. That's a subjective opinion. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not because you don't know exactly what that person thinks. And in reality, the only person, the only person who's you know, thoughts matter about you. It's yourself. It's right. not those people. Okay. So, so, so to me, it is just, it is just an excuse, you know? And, and the honest truth is like, there are tons of Africans who mm -hmm. are smart enough to be able to see that. Mm -hmm. They are able to see it, you know, because look at places like Gambia. Okay. Up, up till now. They can't even have stable electricity. Okay. You, you know why? Why? Let me tell you this. Corruption. Big time corruption. These people are going overseas when they put people in charge to order, you know, these huge generators to bring to the country to provide the electricity. They are going to places like Turkey, you know, buying machines off of them that are no longer in use like other people's used machines that are no longer in in service that's what they would buy right you bring that to gambia for instance um some people they would go and sabotage these machines you start developing things there they will sabotage it by by destroying it mm -hmm. you know every step of the way you know, it is the African hand doing it. Or uh -huh. if they're not doing it themselves, they want to kick back and and, and outsource their uh -huh. problems to other people. And uh -huh. you and I know O'Shea, for instance, if uh -huh. somebody's begging, like if I'm if someone is on the street begging, right? Uh -huh. I'm walking by. Do you think if I decide to give them money, whatever? Uh -huh. Can they can they dictate to me, you know, how much I'm gonna give them? No. If I give you a penny, that's what I want to give you, right? Uh -huh. Do they have the right to complain? No. Okay, this is what black people in Africa and in the diaspora are doing, uh -huh. and then they get they get upset because they want people. Because if you want something, you have to go get it. No one can can give you what you want. You That's know true. what you want. You got to go out there and get it. African nations, the African people, they know what they want. They know what they need. They should get it instead of blaming the white man. There are places in Africa that are doing good, you know, that have eventually woke, woken up and taken the initiative. But the majority are still asleep. All they care about is entertainment. You know? I mean, you, you you see this. Black people, they may not they may not know their flowers, but they sure know how to dance. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's definitely all through the black world. All through the black world. Uh, look, man, yeah. hey, let me tell you this, Ocean. Are you familiar with um naming ceremonies? Yes. Okay. To a certain extent. So Places like Gambia, if you see naming ceremonies, even here in the diaspora, they would spend so much money. You would see people who they are broke, they don't have it, anything. But the moment they have that baby, they would, I mean, like, I think black people are the ones that created GoFundMe in Africa. And then the white people saw it, they eventually put it online because that's how most of them survived. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So 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 if you look at that, right? They you would see someone who is poor. They get married, they bring the child in the world. I have seen okay. this throughout my life where so people would donate to them, their relatives, they would throw huge parties. Okay? And in this party, what they would do is they would go buy you know nice dresses, jewelry, so they would people show up at the party you know they would be going in and out wearing different different dresses 
you know, stunning on other people. You know, so at this point, this has absolutely nothing to do with the child, you know. So these people, instead of being smart and saving the money, they wouldn't do that. They would spend it all and then they go back to the poor house. And this kid, this kid is now their insurance plan without even investing in them properly. Right. They're not investing in the child. Mm -hmm. But now they're expecting this child to do the things for them that they, they couldn't do for themselves. My question always is, because I've asked this question to African adults. I said, you are asking me to do for you what you couldn't do for yourself. How long have you been on this planet Earth prior to me getting here? So mm -hmm. the things you couldn't do for yourself, you're asking me, asking those of me. So African people, they know what they need, but they refuse to apply themselves to mm -hmm. go get it. And my thing is, I believe in survival of the fittest, mm -hmm. the theory that I believe in Darwinism mm -hmm. is nature. You know, mm -hmm. the strong will mm -hmm. survive and the weak would fall out. So that's mm -hmm. how the world works is dog is dog it dog world that's mm -hmm. what it is whether we, we 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 like to accept it or not i mean okay. you being somebody from the united states or mm -hmm. in the capitalist system let's mm -hmm. be real over here what is it like man if you can't pay your bills if you are homeless you're gonna be out in the snow right oh yeah for sure yeah you think people are gonna be like oh man Man, look at this guy, man. Let me bring him in. No, I drive yeah. past people all the time, yeah. you know? So so in Africa, you know, it's different. And and for me, there are some people who are comfortable living like that. That's fine. You know, that's okay with me. And if, if it's okay with them, hey, if you like it, hey, I like it too. Mm -hmm. But that's that's your life and this is my life. But, right. but I have, we have to talk about what the reality is we have to look at the genesis of things uh -huh. you know instead of people trying to you know in, because they say like you said something about brainwashing uh -huh. okay how 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 does brainwashing work you would have to be able to indoctrinate the person through your literatures right uh -huh. through your communication but if I don't even know your language, I cannot read or write your language. I don't have contact with you. How are you going to indoctrinate me? How? Uh -huh. You cannot indoctrinate me. So people that don't know about Africa, they don't know the languages, they don't know the culture. They just throw frivolous things and say, oh, we've been indoctrinated. Uh -huh. You know, but that's not true. And, and if you think about it, right? they hide behind religion. Uh -huh. And I read these books I read about Islam, Christianity, which is, you know, these are the common religions there that the people claim. And But I know that a lot of the people that claim it, they can't even read those books. They don't know what's in it. Yeah, they will pray. But what you see them doing, that's what the African culture is. That's not the Islamic culture. Very uh -huh. few people practice that. Or the Christian culture. That's not mm -hmm. what it is. It's different. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you've been to Africa. Mm -hmm. You've seen people, they tell you I'm a Christian. Like, you know that those people, you know, you question it, right? Mm -hmm. You're like, man, how are they Christian? You know, but they, they perform it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so, so we are either about competence or incompetence. Nobody is indoctrinating anyone. You know, Africans are the ones indoctrinating their own children. Because from the time you're little, they're telling, trying to brainwash you, telling you how, uh, oh, pretty, most Africans, their, their, their mama, their, their parents are like God. Mama is God. They worship mama. They worship their parents. But now my, my, my thinking is, I want to be my own individual. If you see the people that came before you, you look at their performance. If it's not up to par, why do you want to repeat that? You see? Why do you mm -hmm. want to repeat it? So, so that's 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 what people should be asking of 
Africans instead of saying, oh, they have been brainwashed. They have been this, you know? No, nah, that's not reality. And I guarantee you, me talking to you here, a lot of them are going to be like, oh, he's brainwashed. But yeah, sure, I am. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this one off. The brother came in. Uh, and again, I wanted to have some people that had a, a difference of opinion. I know there's going to be people from the the, the, the conscious community, the African-American conscious community that's going to want to challenge what you're saying, want to debate what you're saying. Right. I know you're definitely up for all that smoke. Um, I know a few brothers that's going to watch this and they're going to be hitting me up like, yo, whoever that guy is, like set up a debate between me and this guy. Uh, but I, I think you made out some uh, some strong, well, you, 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 stick, you stick on your positions. And I like that. Um, even if they're unorthodox, you stick to your positions and you use uh, personification to explain what's going on. And you, you know, you, you put it in, in parable form to people to make people see your pictures. And I like that. Tell people why they should subscribe to the Afrodamus Report YouTube channel. Hey, uh, if you subscribe to the Afrodamus Report, you're going to get the uncut, unwavering truth. You mm -hmm. know, we can agree to disagree, but at the end of the day, you know, kick back, get the emotions out of the way and listen to what I'm saying. Think about it. If you disagree with me, by all means, you know, um, challenge me on the points. But I can assure you, when you come to the Afridamus report, you will be entertained. You will be educated. You know, I mean, because I'm not saying I'm a teacher whatsoever, but you're going to hear things at the Afridamus report that you don't hear anywhere because you see black people all over the world they have been shielded from the truth everyone is treating black people with kid gloves so therefore somebody like me has to come out here and lay the facts out so come to the Afridamus report you would you would hear the facts there thank you all right all right guys so make sure you guys subscribe sorry I was um caught up there subscribe at the bell and as you know king on a forever we out <laughs>